time here. I appreciate the people that are here. I appreciate the people that are watching it in post. This is really important to me. Like Jason is one of my really good friends. He's going to be coming to work for my recovery coaching business, hardcore recovery coaching. And uh, so after almost a decade, he finally got a parole hearing, right? Um, he was sentenced, I believe, 19 years. Um, he had like 10 years left that he was facing. For those of you guys who don't know what Jason did, Jason used a certain registry for uh, people who did the terrible crimes, generally, usually against women or children, but definitely the terrible crimes. They put these people on this specific registry. He used that to hunt them down. It has their names, their addresses, what they did. Um, you know these people are felons, so they're probably not armed. Uh, he used that to go and handle business. He broke into their house with a hammer, and he did some unwanted involuntary home repairs on their bodies with a hammer. Uh, but basically, I mean, what are they going to do? Not consent? We know they don't know what consent means. That's how they got on that registry for the terrible crimes in the first place. Uh, so, you know, Jason being a childhood uh, survivor of those types of crimes, just like myself. Like, I feel like a certain kinship with Jason. I appreciate what he did. Personally, I think that he's a hero. I think that he sent a staunch message to the people in his community that they don't allow those types of crimes there. And even after your punishment with the law, whatever punishment the law gives you, because like I've sat in courtrooms. First time I got sentenced uh, to go to prison, I sat there, we just got started, mama's the boss. Uh, first time I got sentenced uh, to prison, I was sitting there and the dude in front of me had uh, two of the terrible crimes against somebody under the age of 12. This, this kid was like young, young, and he had done terrible things to this kid. He had two of them. They gave him six months for one and six months for the other charge, and they ran them con concurrently, which means at the same time. So he only got six months and six months of probation. Uh, so, you know, you watch these dudes come into prison over and over and over again with less time for ruining a child's life than you got for stealing a car or possessing a substance that you were putting into your own body or getting in a bar fight with a grown person and it was a mutual combat and you ended up in prison because you hit harder than he did and these dudes ruin little kids' lives and then they get out quicker than you. And it just boggles the mind, especially being somebody who that happened to. It boggled the mind. It boggled Jason's mind. So, um, you know, he wanted them to know that there are harsher consequences than the law doing. No, bad, bad. Definitely don't go do that again. Zero, you want to say hi? Hey, everybody. Zero wanted to come say hi. This is my little buddy right here. Um, yeah, it makes my blood boil too. 1000%. Uh, so look, Jason, uh, he's really matured, uh, and he's, uh, he's come to a certain realization that he needs to work within the law to be able to change the things that he doesn't like about the law. The same way that I have, like, I didn't like certain aspects of the law here in Florida. So I started working with an organization named Floridians for recovery that was writing legislature. And we actually changed one of the laws here. It was surrounding the uh, prerequisites for uh, peer support specialist certifications and to get funding for things like Narcan and all of that. Um, and, you know, I started working on changing the laws. Zero is a Boston Terrier. This is my little buddy. This is my little bully right here. He's the smallest little bully. But uh, yeah, he's a lot of energy. So you wanna get down? You want to get down? You super don't want to get down. Um, he has come to the realization that he has to do things the legitimate way. So he's grown up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Pylock, thank you so much. Zero thanks you too. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Much love and respect. Um, so, you know, Jason has also, while he's in there, he's turned his life around. Like he's mentoring younger convicts. He's helping people with their mental health. He's helping people in recovery in there. Zero, don't do that, buddy. Don't, that's a bad idea, don't do that. He's gonna knock over one of my supporting lights that lights up the lights behind me. Um, 
and he's running like fitness crews in there to get guys disciplined and get them fit and get them like, you know, ready to be more productive members of society. He's a peer mentor in there. He I actually have a peer mentor program. So he has gotten himself like all the way in that. He's been doing really good. He hasn't had any major DRs in years. No disciplinary reports. That means he's showing exemplary, exemplary behavior. And he finally had um, a parole hearing on Monday. And I made a video long before Monday talking about it. Uh, I made it right after I got off the phone with Jason. We were talking about it. No, Jessica, you didn't miss it. We're still, we're still working up to it. I wanted to give a little background on Jason's story. Um, so... I made the video and then I rewatched the video and I'm like, if somebody were to in any way, shape or form, get this to the parole board, this could affect their decision in a negative way. And I didn't want that to happen. So I waited until after like the paperwork was already through to release my video. And I know that that leaves you guys watching a video a little behind the curve, but I figured that that was better than taking any chance with this man's opportunity at freedom. So he called me. About 10 minutes after he walked out of the parole hearing. Um, and it's kind of good news, kind of bad news. So he had 10 years left. What they did was they split it down the middle. They gave him parole in five years instead of 10 years. So he got five years of his life back. Now this does a couple of good things. Hey, one pedal, one hammer, new t-shirt idea for Jason. I'm loving it, bro. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I appreciate the idea. I appreciate the support. I'm Rizza. What's up? Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you so much. So not only does that give the man five years of his life back, but he spent his whole time at Goose Creek Correctional, which is like, it's like a medium max. You know what I'm saying? It's a, a, a harsher you know, less freedom type of facility there at Goose Creek in Alaska. So um, what this does is it immediately makes him eligible for minimum. And the way it works in Alaska, they actually have a probation office inside the prison so you can work with your probation officer more towards getting out. Well, they, they know who Jason is because Jason's kind of a little bit famous in there. And uh, so he talked to his probation officer and his probation officer is kind of in charge of his case. And they told him that they are working to get him immediately uh, to a minimum camp. And if he goes to the minimum camp, uh, he will be able to do outside work crews where he's out working in the community. And it's Alaska, so I'm assuming that like some of it's probably going to be shoveling snow. They probably have parks crews and forestry crews. You know, and um, in the summer, they might have firefighting crews like they do in Oregon and California which is really cool, man. It's a really cool thing for him to get a change of scenery, to be able to be out in the community and doing work. Um, it also means that I'm going to be able to send him more cool curriculum stuff because Goose Creek was really hard to work with on being able to send him stuff to help him prepare for you know his career when he gets out as a recovery coach. I'd like to get him certified as a peer support uh, recovery specialist, uh, get him certified with the the uh, recovery coaching certification. I'd like to get them all of the smart recovery stuff. And they were like categorically cock blocking him at Goose Creek from getting him stuff that could help him be a better member of society and more prepared for the outside world and to be able to help others, man. Like his whole heart is to help others. Instead of going after the people who victimize kids, now what his focus is, is to be able to use his story and his experience and his life to be able to inspire those who've been through it to be able to do better by showing them the living example, the same exact thing that I do. We talk, we talk for hours about this stuff. Um, so if he makes it for two years, 24 months at that minimum, he will then be immediately eligible to go to, uh, uh, an electronic monitoring. So he'll be on like home confinement. There is no recovery for pedos. Pedos aren't people. Pedophiles are not people. You cannot rehabilitate them. It's proven. Google it. Um, there's management. There is management. You can help them sort of manage it, but is that a risk we want to take if they've already proven to be hurting children? Absolutely not. Our children are precious. Uh, so, yeah, 24 months, good behavior in the minimum. 
he could be out on home confinement, which would be amazing. That would be great. He's already got a place to live. He's already got employment. He's a perfect candidate for that. Um, so he told me when he walked in there and the parole board looked at him immediately, he said, one of these dudes was real gruff and he looked at him and he said, Oh, I see. Uh, I see you're one of those look at me people. And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, you're covered in tattoos. And he looked at the dude and he said, I, I don't know how many tattoos you have, but from my experience, the fact that I have a lot of tattoos means people directly don't look at me. They kind of look away. And I like that, which I thought was hilarious. But, um, yeah, so he's down, uh, he's down considerably, you know, he went from 10 years to five years. It's not the result we wanted. He could have been out in July. We really wanted him to be out in July. We had everything set up, you know what I'm saying? Um, but they didn't give him that. Uh, and you know, it could have been worse. They could have told him to, to kick rocks and go pound sand. They gave him five years of this man's life back and it could be two in there and three on the streets. Why are you falling off me, bro? You're doing the most. Tell the people you're sorry. There you go. What a good boy. Oh, mwah. yeah, they don't directly look at you. I don't get a lot of people trying to make eye contact with me in public unless they recognize me from somewhere. I was at Walmart today. I got up, uh, I went to go hit my dentist appointment and I get there and they're like, yo, you're like an hour early. And I'm like, with my last name, that's crazy. That's never happened before. Um, so I walked across the street to the Walmart, immediately saw two people that recognized me. And it was really cool, man. I got to dap one up. I got to hug another one. Um, they caught me in there buying sketchy stuff. Uh, I bought uh, wax melters, Better Homes and Gardens wax melters. Uh, I bought myself, uh, let's see, what else did I get? Oh, yeah, some, some teeth whiteners get some teeth whiteners. You can see a little bit of that coffee on my teeth. I'm trying to get rid of that. And a nice white monster to kick off my morning. That's a, a nice way to start the morning once the coffee wears off. Yo, so look, zombie queen, I'm addicted to anything that smells good. Sean, I would give you a hug in a hot second, bro. Anytime I see you, bro, you got a big old bear hug coming. Anybody could get a bear hug from me. Like any y'all, I love all y'all, man. I'm like, I'm a hugger. Like if anybody ever sees me out in public, I'm super happy. Like, I'm super happy. If somebody says, hey, you're that dude from, I'm like, hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, that makes me so happy just to, to get to meet you guys. But yeah, anything scented. Scented candles, uh, wax warmers. Um, ooh, yeah, got this for my studio the other day. It's uh, Into the Night. It's from uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. And it smells tremendous. Uh, I'm kind of like... I'm kind of obsessed and a little bit addicted to things that smell good because I spent so many years in prison. I got to tell you guys, one of the harshest things about prison is the assault on the nose and the ears. It's really, really terrible. Uh, you know, you get to see a lot of awful stuff and everything's uncomfortable and dirty in there, but bro, the smells and the sounds, it's terrible. So, um, if you're ever in Pendleton, Oregon, I'd like to buy you a monster. I will take you up on that. Uh, I'm going to be back in Oregon very, very soon. So, yeah, um, I kind of became obsessed with things that smell good. Bath & Body Works has some great stuff. So, look, I'm going to tell you all a little story. Uh, I'll probably end up making full length about this at some point. But, like, so back before I was in recovery, I wasn't drinking very often because I was doing the, the go fast. I was on the high-speed chicken feed, that whoop chicken, you know, that blue uh, so, um, I decided to drink one night. I was bartending and there was this real cute chick there and she was drinking. So I decided to drink with her. Uh, I got off a little bit early. We started drinking and we were hanging out. And the next morning, like, I don't remember what happened, like all the way blacked out. Uh, I, I don't know how I got to her house. I just remember waking up and I'm facing a wall and there's a giant tapestry on the wall that says, it's like got like a floral pattern behind it and it says shit could be worse. And that's what I opened my eyes to. I was like, what is going on here? Right. And like, I roll over and I tap this girl and I'm like, Hey, how old are you? And she's like, I'm 28. Go back to sleep. And I'm like, all right, cool. I went to her bathroom. Right. And when I went to wash my hands, she had this bed, bath and beyond soap called flannel. It was amazing. Right. And I was still a little drunk. This is shitty. Don't judge me. You can judge me. It's okay to judge me. This is terrible. Uh, but that flannel soap smelled so good. I stuffed it in my pocket and I left. 
I stole her bathroom hand soap. It was a low blow, bro. It was a bad deal. So, uh, yeah, I'm, if, if you guys ever get to check out flannel from Bed Bath & Beyond, that stuff is, whoo, it's seasonal though. I always go in in the wrong season. I, I can never tell what season it is in Florida. We only have summer, more summer, and then hurricane season. It's the only seasons we get there. So, yeah, bro. Hey, Twisted Dreams, the smells in prison are awful, dude. Like, especially in dorm living, bro. Just like the symphony of dude farts. And then the smell that wafts across the, the dorm. It's terrible. Especially if you get a bunk. If you get a bunk by the bathroom, bro. You better just beat someone up and take their bunk. I ain't living next to no bathroom, bro. I don't let them do it to me. I, I won't live that way. Again, if you have bad smells, check out. Okay. <laughs> Country, I love you, dog. I, I want to thank Country and Jessica. They're in here right now. They're my moderators. They're amazing. They keep uh, they keep the annoying trolls out. Uh, and and they know they know you really got to mess up here, like to to get kicked out of here or to get silenced. You really got to be doing the most. Uh, they know what time it is. I trust them. They're flawless with it. The mods are great. You really have to be like on some ooey vey to get uh, any type of consequences from the mods here. So, and and they're answering questions. They're throwing stuff out. Do you know Jay Williams? You should reach out to him and do his podcast. I actually was scheduled to get with Jay Williams last night, and he didn't call me. So he gets off work at 6, and I was going to call him real quick when he gets off work at 6 and be like, bro, what happened last night? We were supposed to be interviewing each other all night last night. And when I didn't hear from him, I just redirected to doing a full length that's going to drop pretty soon here. Um, the cat is here. I love you. Hey, uh, one of our other amazing moderators. The cat is amazing. Jay's already off. What is it? It's not even five. Jay's off. Okay. Okay. I'll call him as soon as I'm done with this live. Um, but yeah, I really want to work with Jay Williams. Jay Williams is, he's super cool. His channel's amazing. Um, so yeah, I got to talk to him, um, and let's see. I'm getting ready to go back to New York to go see my homeboy, Ian Bick. Uh, we're working on a couple different things that are kind of uh, ideas for shows that we're going to pitch. We're going we're gonna to record them all on our own, and then we're going to uh, see about pitching them to, like, Netflix and Hulu and, and all of those places. You got to collab with Larry Lawton soon. I keep getting told I need to collab with Larry Lawton soon. I've been talking to Larry about this for months. Um, his RV goes into the shop the 15th, and once it gets out, he's planning on driving up here to do a collaboration with me. We're going to be kicking it right on the beach in an RV, hanging out. Uh, he's going to sip some drinks. He's going to smoke some cigars. I'm going to have my white monster. I'm going to have my little douche flute, and we're going to be hanging out. It's going to be really cool. Uh, definitely doing stuff with Larry Lawton. Um, let's see, uh, who else? Uh, Johnny, Johnny Mitchell. He's going to be, uh, in New York when I'm in New York with Ian Bick. So that's going to be really cool. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming up, man. I'm really blessed. I'm really stoked to be working with a lot of different people. Um, it, it's good times. It's absolutely good times. Um, so just like in, in, in like summation with the thing with Jason in case anybody, just got on here and they want to know what happened with Jason. Uh, Jason had 10 years left. He went to see the parole board. They cut it in half. They gave him five years. So they gave the man five years of his life back. He's immediately eligible to go to minimum custody. Uh, so he'll go to a nicer prison where he can work outside the prison. Um, but uh, if he does 24 months of clear conduct with no DRs, not getting in no trouble, which I believe he will not get in no trouble. Those minimums are really petty. If you've ever been to a minimum custody prison, it's a lot harder to not get in trouble there than it is at a maximum. They leave you a lot more alone at a maximum, but I think he'll be able to navigate it just fine. 24 months and he can get out on house arrest with the ankle monitor. He'll have one of these cool like Apple watches on his foot. Shout out to Dubs, homeboy Mighty Mouse. Hey, what's up, Dubs? Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Big love, brother. Uh, does he get a chance at another parole hearing? I don't believe he does. I don't believe that he does. 
So they sentenced him under the old guidelines, but I believe that they're holding him to the new guidelines in Alaska. And I'm not sure how Alaska works, so don't come at me. I'm just going off of like what I've what I've understood from what he said. And it's sometimes hard to hear him over a prison phone, but I believe he said that the new guidelines, you only get one shot um, because he's seen them mess over people who had their one shot at a parole and uh, they they ended up messing people over and then they had, the, it was just a wrap. It was life. So, um, and yeah, the douche flute, country nailed it. It's, it's my little vape pen. It's my little mango flavored vape that I got going on. Hey man, your vids have helped me a lot. My mama is in Ohio prison and stopped. Talk to me. You're showing me what she went through. I appreciate it, brother. Paxson, hey man, much love and respect to you and your mother. Yo, it, it sucks to have loved ones locked up. And like, I was always on the other side of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was always the one and I was in there and I was locked up. And like, my people were like, it's so hard while you're in there to not have you. And I'm like, I'm the one in here doing time. Like, what? what's the big deal? You know, you guys are fine. I'm the one in here. And, yo, like, I have a few of my really close friends who are locked up right now, and it legitimately hurts. Like, it sucks. I get what they're saying now. Like, some of my favorite people are locked up. Thomas, thank you. This is to help keep up, or this is to help you keep up helping had a friend that was not able to break out of drugs after prison. He OD'd. Hope there are more that make it clean and get their life back. Yo, Thomas, thank you so much. My absolute condolences to your friend, man. I get it. Like, I've lost quite a few. Like, really in Daytona, I've got one friend that's clean and I've got one friend that's in prison and the rest are dead, bro. For my people that were using, the rest are dead. Like, everybody's dead, bro. Like, this fentanyl is killing everybody. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the White House announcement, um, but the government has just announced that uh, they're doing a big threat alert about the xylazine mixed with the fentanyl. They're going to start dealing with it uh, as if it's a, a terroristic act to have this in mass quantities. Um, it's like a basically like making it like a weapon of mass destruction if they catch you trafficking in large amounts. I think is what they're moving towards um, because it's just killing so many people, bro. Like 120,000 people died from overdose from that stuff last year in this country alone. And so much of it was young people, bro. People, you know, you know, 17 to 30 was a huge demographic. Men, 17 to 30, huge demographic, bro. It's killing so many people. It's insane. So um, I really appreciate you, Thomas. I, I'm, again, my condolences. Emeriah, what's up, dog? Thanks for keeping us up with this. Big prayers, homie. I DM'd you on IG. Hit me back. Everyone who gets out is a miracle. Peace and love delay. Hey, Emeriah, absolutely. I'll check that out, bro. I'm going to get back at you. I really appreciate you, man. Big love and respect. And yes, every single person that gets out is a miracle. Every single day that we spend free, not just from prison. Let me just, let me clarify this. Like, I would be more free locked up in prison, sober, then personally, I feel that I would be out here slaved out to a substance. Like what methamphetamines did to my life, the way that it enslaved me, the way that it held me down and oppressed me, the way that it took my humanity from me was more dehumanizing than, uh, than being in prison. It was, it was more enslaving than being locked in a cell all day. My every thought and desire was controlled by little bags. I mean, my bags were bigger, but it sounds way more dramatic when you say little bags. You know what I'm saying? Um, so every day is a miracle. Every day is a miracle. Every win is a miracle. Every time somebody posts their clean date on any of these videos, uh, I, I get that feeling. I get hyped, man. I'm like, yes, you are a miracle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we get so many losses with this fight. There are so many losses that we get that it's really important to celebrate the wins that we do get. Otherwise it could be so overwhelming, man. It, it was so overwhelming for me for so long working, uh, at this, I worked at 148 person, uh, sober house, uh, that was like a sober house treatment center. And it was so overwhelming seeing the people that would come in and they were so willing and 
you get your hopes and dreams wrapped up in them. You know what I'm saying? They're coming in nonstop and you're like, I believe in you. You can do this. And in your heart of hearts, you're hearing them talk and you know they'd pass a polygraph saying they'd never use again, saying that they wanted to change, saying they wanted to get their family back, saying they wanted to be a part of their kids' lives. And you just watch that willingness slowly slip out of them as they slip back out to the streets. And the next thing you know, you're reading their fucking obituary, man. It happened to me so many times. It, it beat me spiritually. It beat me emotionally. It beat my heart up, bro. Like, it just really did. And that's why I was really stoked to be able to get my own business started where I'm working with less people that they're more serious and I can plug into them and give them more individualized attention because just working with people in mass and seeing the losses that we're taking, although it's, it's like really important work. It just, after a few years, it was just too much for me, bro. Like I had to go do something else because it was, it was beating the hell out of my heart too much. I have so much respect and admiration for the people who are still working there after all this time, bro. Uh, in fact, I need to call them and I need to go set up uh, speaking there and speaking at a couple other places. Um, I'm going to be headed out to New York, but I'm really trying to do some public speaking, at least at least at treatment centers and detoxes before I go. Uh, I've really been like compelled. Like I feel like the universe is telling me, I feel like God or the energy is telling me like, yo, you need to go get out of your bubble and go speak to people face to face. Because I talk to you guys all the time. And I get a much bigger crowd and it's, it means so much, but I think that for my own recovery, it's important for me to remind myself of where I came from and go and see the people who have that desperation, who've freshly come out of that. You know what I'm saying? I think it would be good for me personally. Um, so I think I could be like, you know, selfish in doing that and, and going and speaking to them and showing them some love. Um, Let's see. Thomas said, JD, are you able to send something to Jason's commissary? I don't have his, um, I don't have his, uh, info handy. Um, his sister is on here and his sister's on TikTok, and she posts that stuff a lot. I don't have it with me. Um, but I can get it. I can get it and I'll post it brother. I absolutely will. Um, I'm sure he could appreciate and use the help. Uh, Pylock. Uh, at JD delay, any chance your channel will ever have a mailing address would be great. If there was a way to send you some resources from different States, more recovery groups need to interconnect. Absolutely. Like I haven't seen a need to do that, but I can absolutely make that happen. Uh, I can figure out an address for sure. Um, and you know, if it gets me ways to be able to connect and network and be able to help more people, I'm 100% for that, bro. I'll go to whatever lengths it, it takes to be able to help more people. Uh, nightmare creator, man. I can only pray that my cousin can do what you have done. He finally gets out when he gets out. I'm going to direct him to watch your videos. Where's he at? Where's he at nightmare? Uh, is he, is he in Florida? Is he in Oregon? Is there some way that we can work to get him the resources that he needs? Let's set him up. Let's set him up the best way that we possibly can. Let's try to put him all the way in play so that he doesn't have to do you know, as much of the work on his own. Let's show him support. Let's, let's circle around him and love on him. I've been busy, JD. I'll find you on Instagram. Country, you're always on time and you don't ever got to explain nothing, bro. You, you show up when you show up. You good with me, dog. It's all love and respect to you, my man. Uh, if you do, if you can hit me up on Instagram, I would love to be able to talk to you about some stuff, but, uh, bro, you do what you do. It's always just going to be love for me. Uh, JD, were guys allowed to have things like computers and tablets? So there are, like, I think most states have tablets now. Um, when I was in county here in uh, Florida, we had, like, tablets that were, like, unit tablets in county. You had to share them with everybody, but you could email and stuff like that. Um, when I was in Oregon in prison, they didn't even have tablets yet, bro. I mean, I'm talking, like, I went in in 2006. We had flip phones and, like... They just came out with the flip phones with the cameras on them. I was amazed. I was amazed. Hey, Thomas. Oh, my God. When you get the info, pass what you can of this on to him. Thomas, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much for me and from Jason. I really appreciate it. I absolutely will. Thank you for the support. He's going to be so appreciative. I'm so appreciative. Love, man. Much love and respect to you, brother. I really appreciate that. Um, But, yeah. 
they barely had the phones with the cameras on them. And I get out and there's iPhones. So I need to, I need to figure out and post uh, Jason's stuff because I know that on the video in the comments, a lot of people asked. A lot of people asked about how do I get money to Jason, yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I know that I'm slacking on that. I've got a lot going on. I, I went and got like hours of dental work today. And I set up four more appointments because it turns out I, I still got a full set. I'm only missing one of these bastards, right? But um, they found a few cavities and I have one tooth that needs a cap. Um, and uh, so I've got like some more appointments coming up. It turns out that doing meth for 20 years is not good for your body. It's not good for your teeth. So, um, you know, part of being an adult for me uh, is, you know, moving forward and trying to get uh, as much of the self-care stuff that I slacked on for so long done now. Uh, so that's what I've been doing today. At Jeff, not what everyone was hoping for, but it's better than nothing. And JD said he could be moved to a minimum location soon. So look, Jeff, if you missed out, this whole thing, this live isn't, isn't about me. It's about just answering your guys' questions. It's also about talking about Jason. Um, Jason had 10 years left. They cut him down to five. They gave the man five years of his life back which puts him at eligibility for minimum custody right now. So they're going to move him to a minimum custody facility. And then after they move him to a minimum custody facility, he'll be eligible for outside work crews, which makes your time go a lot quicker. It makes your time easier if you're getting outside that prison. Um, and then when you get, uh, when he gets 24 months in and he has three years left, he's eligible for home confinement on one of the ankle bracelets. Nightmare Creator, he's at North Fork in Oklahoma. He will be out in 2000 or, or 2028. Bro, it's a little too soon to be making plans for him. I apologize. I got all excited. I was like, yo, he's getting out. Let's get him. Let's get him help. Um, that's that's a little premature to be able to get him help. Um, so uh when it gets when it gets a little closer, bro. Hit me up, man. I'll figure it out. That just gives me more time to make, uh, you know, more networks and be able to get more connections as far as Oklahoma and everything. Um, I actually just recently got booked. Um, I really didn't want to talk about it too much because I haven't signed the paperwork yet. It's being sent to me, but I'm pretty sure it's a, a sure thing. So just understand that I think this is a sure thing. If it ends up falling through and not happening, don't think that I lied to you, but um, there's a huge peer support conference in Arkansas in August, and Quincy Carter is going to be speaking. Uh, Congressman Patrick Kennedy is going to be speaking, and little old me is going to be speaking. They have me booked as a keynote speaker. I am so excited about this. Uh, my, my dude Jimmy uh, is doing huge things out there in Arkansas, so um, I'm really excited to be a part of that. Nightmare. One love, brother. One love. And please, yo, if you talk to him, tell him I send my love and respects. Tell him that we out here pulling for him. Tell him that he has support. Tell him that we did not forget him. We do not forget our people in there, bro. That's not what's happening. So let him know. Um, I know. Real human. I know, bro. Uh, Chris, do you come to Portland often? Me and my girl would love to take you to... A Thorns game? Well, you know, I don't come to Portland often right now, but uh, I'm planning on coming to Portland a lot, a lot more, because um, right now I'm living in Florida, but we're going to be in Eugene a lot more, and like my, my sis lives in Gresham, so we have a spot out there anytime we want to go, and like my wife's favorite band, Rainbow Kitten Surprise, is going to be playing at Edgefield, uh, McMinimins, and we're getting tickets to that. It's going to be great. Kristen punched the dentist last visit. I got to be fully sedated. People need to listen. I had torture, not dental fear. Yo, look, man, like they were scraping because I got a, a, a tooth cleaning today. Some of that scraping was entirely unpleasant. I was super not cool with it. Hey, Anthony, 10 days clean. What's up, man? Big love and respect to you, dog. I believe in you. You got this. Mr. Unremarkable, keep up the good work. Pedos like nails, they need hammering. Mr. Unremarkable, thank you for your love and support, and I 100% stand with you on that. 
Pedophiles are not people. Uh, JD, I'm new to your channel. Do you have an email address to speak one-on-one? -on -one? I don't have one set up that's not for my, my business or personal right now. I need to set one up and I need to get it to country. Um, so I'll be doing that soon. Um, and yeah, Anthony, 10 days. What's up, bro? Uh, let's see. Country. They fractured your jaw, bro? No. No. Oh, God. Bro, I feel that. When I read that, I was like, ah, that's terrible, bro. I love how everyone here is on the same page. Pedos are not people. They should be treated as such. Well, you know, I mean, I talk about it a lot. I talk about it a lot. I want this to be a safe space for people that are real people and good people and, you know, protectors of kids and, you know, not bullies and, and stuff like that. Um, but I want it to instill fear into the hearts of weirdos, bro. If there's somebody out there and they're watching my content and then they, they think it's all good and all of a sudden they're like, oh, man, I'm a pee, pee toucher and this dude, oh, wow, look at this. He's got 8,000 comments of people that hate pee, pee touchers. Maybe I should not touch kids' pee pees. That's my hope. That's my goal. And still fearing them. We got the clothes for it and all of that. So that's kind of part of uh, why I'm so vocal about it. I also want people who are, are survivors to know that people like me exist. That people like Jason exist. That people like Big Luke exist. I know a lot of people. A lot of big dudes, a lot of scary dudes, a lot of tattooed dudes, a lot of really prone to violence, uh, unhinged, mentally unstable dudes who will protect children at any cost. You know what I'm saying? I just want, I want those dudes that are on the fence about, eh, you know, should I like go to that daycare or not? Think about us. Understand, burn this face, burn these fists into your memory. There's a million of me, I promise. I'm not special. They're out there all across the country. I am not special. I am not unique. There are so many dudes just like me out there. Nightmare, even dogs and cats will tell you pedos aren't people. 1,000%. Look, it wasn't this dog. It was not this dog. It wasn't Zero. Zero, come say hi. We're going to talk about dogs. Um, my, my old dog... Uh, my uh, service animal for 13 years, she loved everybody. Like, she was cool with everybody. Maybe not immediately, but if you were around her a few times, she'd be like, all right, all right. She could really tell people's energy. And she would be cool with everybody except this one dude. And, like, me and him were really close. I was always like, Olive, chill out. Chill out. Why you, why you like that to dude? And uh, he ended up doing a controlled buy on me. And I'm pretty sure she knew that he had stank coochie energy the entire time. And that's why she wasn't messing with him. She knew that he was going to be that type of dude. And he tried to get me for 30 years. He was trying to make this, uh, he was trying to make the amounts enough to be a trafficking. And it would have been like a really big deal. But um, he owed me some money. So I only gave him half of what he brought the money for, and I kind of beat him up a little bit and sent him out, and uh, so that's why I only got a simple sale out of it. But he was trying to put me away forever. Um, yeah, this is my buddy. This is Zero. He's my little boy. Uh, I got to take him to the beach here at some point this evening. I own a nice little beach walk. We live like two blocks away from the beach here in Daytona, uh, so... He likes to go down there and then down to the rivers the other direction. I'm smack in between the beach and the river. So he gets to go out a lot and do a lot of fun stuff. Well, you guys, um, I don't have a whole lot more time. I got to make some dinner for my wife. I uh, really just wanted to update you guys about Jason. I appreciate everybody that was here. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. I know that Jason does too. I know that a lot of people were sending positive energy his way. I know that a lot of people were praying for him. I know that a lot of people are pulling for him and supporting him. I'd like to give one more shout out to my mods. I absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who keeps coming back and watching the lives, who keeps watching the content. Um, one real quick question. Did any of you guys see the full length skit? Should we do more of the full length skit? I mean, it's, it's getting a lot of traction. It's getting a lot of positive comments. I think that I'm going to start doing like a series of those. Um, and I've even talked to Ian 
And I think that me and Ian might do a few of them while I'm in, uh, while I'm in, uh, New York with him. So there's going to be more of that stuff coming. Thomas, thank you again. Big love and respects to you, brother. I appreciate you. The full length skits. It, it seems like the full length skits are a go. You know, we're actually going to try to do some high production ones and see if we can like sell it as a sitcom uh, maybe not like a sitcom, like a dark calm, uh, and, uh, you know, have some, uh, some studios pick it up and actually do, you know, like a whole series of them would be really cool to have seasons and stuff. Amy, thank you. I will, I will tell Jax that you said that. Thank you so much. Lizzie, I appreciate you being here. Sean, big love and respects, real human. Appreciate you. Daxter, always fire, my dog. Always fire. All right, y'all, I'm going to take off. I love you. The cat, the cat, thank you so much. Yeah, if you guys want to check out my Spotify or my Apple Music or any of that stuff, the song Cat's talking about is here on, on YouTube. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, I have music on all the streaming platforms. If you want to hear me yell at you and play instruments, I do that too. One love, y'all. Be good or be good at it.